I set the 60% uh, threshold of residents with one dose as the benchmark to start the reopening. Uh, that's lower than Saskatchewan's of 70 and lower than the federal benchmark of 75. Well, we're doing well in terms of vaccinations in BC. Today, roughly 64% of people have already received their first dose of immunization, and that will continue in the days to come. So we're confident we're going to meet our benchmarks. Uh, the analysis is based on the work of public health. When anyone gets vaccinated, it makes us all safer. And uh, you're going to see as we get more vaccine in the month of June, particularly more Pfizer, that those immunization numbers are going to go up. And there is a very significant enthusiasm about uh, immunization in BC. We opened up, uh, as you know, for 12 to 17 year olds uh, last Thursday, and about 148,000 people have already registered uh, in that those age categories. So that tells you is that we're doing well, and we've got to continue to encourage people to register and get immunized. So these are not maximums; they are minimums to, to take action going forward, but we expect to be much higher than these areas, and that's what we're driving to do. Okay, um, what about the second dose? By the way, it's a very high rate of first dose in BC. When will the second dose come? Everyone's talking about, you know, one dose summer, two dose summer. What's the second dose strategy? The second dose strategy is uh, we're going to see the period between first and second doses reduced, and we'll be briefing Dr. Bonnie Henry our provincial health officer will be briefing everyone on that on Thursday. So that period is going to be reduced. What has been evident is that some increased time between doses increases effectiveness for many people, so we have to keep that into account. But we're going to be proceeding with more and more second doses uh, in the coming months, both reflecting the amount of vaccine we have and also, um, and also reflecting, again, uh, our adapting of the strategy to meet the conditions. And so we're getting closer and closer to meeting our targets on first doses. We'll be doing more second doses as well. And the first people to get second doses will be just as they were first doses, those that are most vulnerable. So our elders, people who are clinically vulnerable. In BC, our public health um, officials with respect to clinically vulnerable, using old fashioned letters to people, uh, we've immunized mm -hmm. well over 200,000 clinically vulnerable people in British Columbia early on in the pandemic, and many of those are getting ready for their second doses. Uh, what happens if there's a variant that comes up from somewhere and, and there's that, that horrific case of the fourth wave, the snapback? Uh, how flexible is the plan? Uh, we, we always adapt. And so what the plan says is that there are benchmarks. And the benchmark for the middle of June is continuing decreasing in cases and con continuing decrease in hospitalization in critical care. Since the height of the third wave, we've gone from 511 people in the hospital to about 300 today. We've gone from uh, in critical care, a high of 183 people to 93 today. So we want to see that continue. And if it doesn't continue, well, right. we, we're going to act based on and the other. Uh, Minister, last question. Um, you know, Quebec has this QR code they're talking about. Now that you've sort of a, almost like a vaccine passport, although they're not using it that way, now that you've got this kind of hopeful timeline, and, and boy, do we all hope it works, um, what happens when people get their second dose? Will they have a code? Will there be a vaccine passport? What's the Will they be able to travel? Will people be able to come to BC in, in August? What, what's the plan on all that? Well, the plan is laid out pretty carefully in what we've proposed to people, so you're going to see some of those things happening. But the key in BC in terms of access is access to your vaccination records. The reason we, uh, in, uh, we invested so heavily in our vaccination system, our registration system, was to ensure that every person would have access to uh, when they got their first dose, when they got their second dose, and what vaccine they have. So you'll be able to access that in BC uh, yourself. And so that will give you a lot of what you need to go forward. That's important. The other thing I would say is this with respect to vaccination passports, with respect to access to services in BC, that won't be dependent here in BC on a vaccination passport. But I think for things such as international travel, there's a lot of discussion about that. I think it's a good idea. It's a little bit beyond my jurisdiction to talk about, but here in BC, yeah. you're gonna have access to your information about your vaccine. That was really important to us, and it's why we spent so long putting together our registration system. Yeah, I mean, these are fraught with all sorts of, as you know, equity issues and everything, but it's, uh, uh, this is the inevitable thing. There's got to have access to that. Um, the Health Minister of BC, Adrian Dix, great to have you on the program.